for the game. Well, that that thing got out of hand way quickly there at the end. I just, oh gosh. Um, congrats to Michigan for winning the national championship. Uh, before we move into the 12-team era, I'll probably do another reaction once, once it's all said and done. Like, what does this do for the legacy of Harbaugh, you know, and his forward movement if he goes to the NFL? Personally, I don't think he is. I think they're just sitting and waiting to give him probably one of the most lucrative historic contracts of all time for him to stay at Michigan or he retires. Michigan owned him like the whole way through and that brings my total now. I think I'm either two and eight or one and nine all time in my national championship predictions in this college football playoff era. Like I haven't predicted the right team since the two a throw. Anyways, yeah, I had the Huskies tonight. I thought it would be I was leaning towards a shootout. I really was. Like, I thought that a Dunze would have a touchdown. Johnson would probably have a handful of touchdowns. I thought Roman Wilson would have a touchdown. Corum, he had a handful of touchdowns. Like, I thought this could turn into a 32-35, uh, 36-38 kind of game where it just turns into a track meet because both of the offenses are so good. I, I would say probably the key thing for the reason why Michigan won is the running game. Oh my gosh. Donovan Edwards just exploded there in the first half. Two carries for over 80 yards and two touchdowns. Like, who who would have thought that? I wonder if anybody bet money on that. I wonder how much their payout was for that because I didn't see that coming. I don't think anybody saw that coming. So that was impressive. And then Blake Corm, he had a handful of touchdowns too. He put the nail in the coffin there for the final one after the interception. Um, I think just... Gosh, the miscommunications probably. Penalties, people will talk about penalties. Of course, they'll talk about penalties, and they'll talk about officiating. The dropped passes. More than anything, I think the dropped passes by Penix. Like, the feeling that I had watching this game is, okay, Max Duggan looked rattled last year when Georgia absolutely whooped him. And then Bryce Young seemed a little uneasy there in the second half when he lost to Georgia, too. Like, this felt like the 2017 National Championship where Alabama got up early on Clemson. Deshaun Watson was just rattled the whole time, but then they settled in, and then they made it a game. That's exactly what happened. Penix was rattled early, but then they settled in. I'm thinking of that one drop from uh, Nixon. When Nixon dropped that one pass, I think that was huge, but then also the Adunze catch that was called back when it had to happen. Like, okay, we need this for the win to keep the game going. Penix forces the ball. Yeah, yeah, he was trying to hit McMillan, and then it ended up getting intercepted there and almost returned for a touchdown. Like, it kind of felt like the Keely Ringo play in the 21 National Championship where it's like, this is going to be a freaking pick six, but uh, they stopped him, and then Corm punched it in to extend the score for more than two touchdowns, and Michigan ended up winning, which congrats to them, man. And my brain now thinks... Like, because I like to tease and I like to be a troll. My brain thinks like, okay, so like, it, I would love to see a tournament where it's like, okay, let's take the recent national championship winners. If we throw like 2020 Alabama with Devontae Smith and Mac Jones against the Georgia Bulldogs of the 21 and the 22 team against Michigan, it's like out of those four teams, like who comes out victorious? It's like, okay, Michigan won the natty, but it's like, could Michigan, like, let's say, for example, if it was the 12 team could Michigan and beat Georgia? I, I have a feeling that this national championship might be talked about. It'll either be talked about for a very long time because of the history and the legacy of Harbaugh as a coach and Michigan just as a whole because Michigan is finally coming back to its old glory. Or it's going to kind of be like how you know, the 2020 national championship was or last year's national championship where it's like, okay, yeah, it's cool. Nick Saban won one or okay. Yeah, it's cool that Georgia won back to back, but then it's forgotten and it's not remembered for all time. Like, you know, to his Hail Mary pass or um, back when Trevor Lawrence absolutely dominated Alabama. You see what I mean? Um, because nobody's talking about the Ohio state national championship back when this whole thing started. 
nobody's talking about that one anymore or the one with Coker and stuff and Derrick Henry in 2016. So, anyways, so good on Michigan. Uh, <laughs> maybe next year I'll finally predict one right. Sad, sad for the way things unfolded. I think, oh gosh, starting the year off 0-1. In championship predictions, so it's like we might go 0 and 2 with the Super Bowl, then 0 and 3 with March Madness. I never get that correct, so that's enough of me rambling. I'll probably do another video about this championship later. Catch y'all in the next one. Peace. Yeah.